Hello and welcome to AC Circuit Analysis, this time looking at some of the level 1 problems, the ones that do actually count for some marks. They're not that much harder than the level 0 problems, it's just that some of the phases are not 0 or 180 degrees. That doesn't really affect how you do these problems at all. Similar idea, what have we got here? Well, we have a current source here which cannot be flowing down through the voltmeter because being an ideal voltmeter this has an infinite impedance. So none of this current is flowing down through the voltmeter, it must all be flowing down through this voltage source and through this capacitor. Well if I know the current through a capacitor I can work out what the voltage across it is. It's just the current times the impedance of the capacitor. So that is 7.5 microamps at zero multiplied by the impedance of this capacitor which is 1 divided by j times omega 2 pi times 100 kilohertz here multiplied by the capacitance 4.7 picofarads right so that's the voltage about 2.5 volts at minus 90 degrees, that's the voltage across this capacitor from here to here. That's the direction the current is flowing, so this must be the higher voltage than this. The voltmeter will be reading the total voltage from here to here. I now know the voltage across this capacitor. I also know this voltage here. So by Kirchhoff's voltage law, the voltage across this voltmeter must be this voltage plus this voltage. So that is x, I've just worked it out in the x box here, plus 1.8 at a phase angle of minus 90. That's it. Do a couple more. Right, here similar idea. We have a 11 milliamp current flowing this way and a 4.9 milliamp current flowing this way. No current can be flowing through the voltmeter, so the difference between these two currents must be flowing through the 1 nanofarad capacitor. Well, Kirchhoff's current law applied to this point in the circuit here. The total ingoing current is 11 milliamps at 90 degrees. The total outgoing current is 4.9 milliamps at 90 plus the current through this capacitor, therefore the current through that capacitor must be 11 milliamps at 90 degrees minus 4.9 milliamps at 90 degrees also. Net result 0 0.0061, about 6.1 milliamps at 90 degrees. In fact, no need to get a calculator to do that, really. Could have done that in my head. If I know the current through this capacitor, I could work out the voltage across it. The voltage across it would just be the current multiplied by the impedance of the capacitor. And the impedance of the capacitor, as ever, is 1 divided by j times omega, which is 2 times pi times 50 kilohertz, times the capacitance, which in this case is 1 nanofarad. So, this is the impedance of the capacitor. This is the current through the capacitor. If I multiply the two together, I should get the voltage across the capacitor. It's just that extension to Ohm's law again. The voltage is the current multiplied by the impedance. Fine. In this case, you can see it happens to be completely real. Just do one more. See if I can find one with an R ah, here, with an ammeter. Right, we have the voltage of 1.1 volt at 0 degrees, and since it's a perfect ammeter, it has no impedance, so there can be no voltage across it, so we know the voltage across this capacitor is 1.1 volts. If I worked out the impedance of this capacitor, that would be 1 divided by j times 2 times pi times 10 kilohertz in this case, that's omega, multiplied by the value of the capacitor, 22 picofarad. That will give me the complex impedance of this capacitor. 
I know the voltage across the capacitor, I know the convex impedance of the capacitor, so I could work out the current through it. That's just the voltage divided by the complex impedance. If I know the current through it, then I can apply Kirchhoff's law to this point in the circuit here. The current flowing into this node is the unknown current plus this 16 microamps. The current flowing out is this current here. Therefore, the unknown current here must be the current flowing out minus this 16 microamps flowing in. So I could just write that as x minus 16 microamps at naught. Don't need to write at naught because it's real anyway. That'll do. Again, it's nothing to be scared of. It's just using the same Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's laws that we've used many times before. We just have to remember to use them with complex numbers. Good luck.